lucky and where when life is the law in the law where you're watching life in the law uh, I'm delighted at, to have Michael Goloyu today I knew I was gonna <laughs> not say it smoothly he, he, he said it to me twice Goloyu Michael Goloyu uh, LGBT activist and how else would you describe yourself I mean that you're you're an activist. That's a full-time job. Yeah, kind of. I, I like to consider myself a civil rights activist with an emphasis on LGBT issues. Exactly right. Because I cover a gamut of issues from mm -hmm. women's rights, uh, education, uh, uh, basically anybody that, the underdog. And um, like our homeless situation, I I'm not. I wouldn't consider myself at the forefront of that, but I do try to help out where I can right. when I have the uh, spare time. So you. You're on the right side. You like to you like to be on the, the right, right side. <laughs> I like to think I'm on the right I side. Think you're on the right side. So, um, tell me a little bit about the um, LGBT caucus because I get emails from them every day, almost. <laughs> And what are you guys up to? What are you guys doing? Well, the LGBT caucus is the Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. We are an official arm of the Democratic Party. Uh, we Our emphasis on LGBT rights, making sure our issues are brought to the forefront within the party, that we we are there to help remind the party what it means to be a, a big tent, to make sure that they include our issues. And we are there... Um, to have a voice at the table. We, um, we're, com we're coming into convention right now. We're getting ready for that. We're, um, and for convention, for those of your viewers that don't know, is where we discuss our platform, the guiding principles of our party. We look at the rules in the, uh, the rules committee, which covers our constitution and bylaws, the structure. It gives us form and how we interact with each other and get, empowers the, par the party to act. And then we also have our resolutions committee, which actually gives, should, is supposed to give action to our platform mm -hmm. or respond to an issue that may be our, platform silent on so it's I love convention time. Are there any hot, hot resolutions I need to know about? Oh, there's a bunch of different ones. We we have 62 as of wow. as of last night. I'm co-chairing the resolutions committee with Colleen Hanabusa for, and so we we just went through them all last night and divvied them up and passed about to the committee members to champion them, clean them up, get them back in the proper forms, and we're going to have some really good in, uh, issues of. Um, taxing uh legalizing marijuana and taxing that and using that money to pay for schools we have one calling upon the legislature to do the right thing and ban conversion therapy not only for minors but for adults as well um what's the aversion to that i mean you were just talking about that it, it was in the legislature mm -hmm. what what uh, i mean to me it's a no-brainer it should like be a no-brainer it's like a no-brainer nobody's no medical professional no reputable medical oh, professional stands behind uh, it. yes and it supports it it's been it's been bashed by every uh major medical association out there somebody's phone is ringing oh. I, I don't think it's mine i don't I think don't it's mine either so you have a phone so um we'll, we'll just pretend there's no phone ringing at all yeah we're in somebody's living room it's going oh, up yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Exactly. so <laughs> nice and much cleaner than my own living room yeah. i must say yes so um it went through, I was surprised how quickly it went through the Senate. Uh, um, when my conversations with the House le leadership on the uh, banning conversion therapy, and this was just for minors, was we had the support of, uh, the bill first got introduced, it also included teachers covering the bill. And HSTA stepped up to the plant and said, yes, we support this bill, even though it, it, it um, if a teacher was tried to implement this or uh, push a student towards conversion therapy, there, there was actually a negative impact. And that's the first time in many DOE professionals that, that, that talked to me ever that uh, HSTA said, yes, we are so against this that we would we want to make sure our teachers don't do this. Our members aren't doing so this. So who's your opposition? Uh, Religious groups. Religious groups. You have it's the same old, same old bigots as I like okay. to call them. They show up every time and they go with the whole fear thing. Oh, what? You're gonna try to stop kids from getting therapy? And I'm like, no, 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 no. We're trying to stop kids from being tortured by a therapist. Right, right. Um, for those of your, for your viewers that don't know, conversion therapy is the this false idea that you can change someone's sexual orientation uh, through na uh, through therapy, be it uh, electro um, shooting a thousand volts of their genitals. Yes, so yeah. it's 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 cognitive behavioral, behavioral. therapy and uh, it's electroshock uh, therapy. It's it's as I said before, it's pretty much 
try to do, you try they try to torture the gay out of you exactly <laughs> and it, we saw um, this got a flurry in World War Two with the Nazis they were like they were trying to see if they could stop somebody from being gay and you're gonna say something to get people to stop torturing you there but oh, I, I, I'd agree to anything <laughs> for yeah I'd like, be like yes you're right and I'm like the the side effects from this is everything from depression to death there's no upside to conversion therapy because and there some of the pushback on it was like oh it's not really happening here and I go well we know it's happening but we never know until after the fact really yeah because really? because of the shame the what do you call it you have uh, parents forcing their kids into it adults being lured into it by whatever but we don't find out about two years later I'm not surprised here and I'll tell you why because there's a, there's a tremendous traditional family-oriented culture, mm -hmm. and there's got to be a lot of pressure from various groups that have that very strong, you know, family, you know, tr really traditional family mm -hmm. culture. Um, in New York, ev no one lives with their family. Everybody's mm -hmm. like all scattered all over. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no societal pressure to mm -hmm. do that sort of thing. They're, they're just not enough, you know. But I wouldn't be surprised if th there was enough here. Yeah, um, and it's people will go to it just to get be, make uh, make mom and dad happy, and then sure. then when they're out of the house, you see them leave to the mainland or switch to a different island. But we are such a small state that it's still there, and the the, the pressure is there, and it just needs to be outlawed. Apparently, we or we've seen at the um, federal level. Uh, Cory Booker, a very good Democrat. Love him. Love him to Love death. Him. Got it to meet him four years ago when I was at uh, North Carolina, which is a state I won't go to for a while. Uh, um, but I got to meet him at the convention there, and he just introduced at the federal level banning it outright. We've seen four other states ban it, uh, two for adults and two for just minors. And we're looking for Hawaii to do it for everybody because it's it's basically a false idea, right. idea that you're peddling. It's the modern day snake oil. Right, it's it is. It's bloodletting. It is, it is. It's the, I'm like, we would not allow a doctor to sell. Um, Leeches. Exactly. <laughs> this will, right. this is going to cure you of your cancer. Right, exactly. There, there's exactly. nothing to cure. There's no, there's nothing to repair. There's no conversion to happen. I'm like, unless you're trying to kill someone's spirit. I'm glad you're working on that because that's, it's just, it's just horrible. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just. So what, well, let's talk about the convention. I see you supporting Hillary. I am supporting Hillary. Uh, everybody's like, a lot of my progressive friends automatically thought I'd go to Bernie. And I'm like, Hillary was progressive before Bernie was. She's pretty very progressive. progressive. It's very progressive to have the first woman president. It's very mm -hmm. progressive. She, is she perfect? No, nobody is. And, uh, but she, I, I identify with her a lot because as a activist to being out there on the forefront being a gay man no, having to be ten two times three times four times better than my straight counterparts uh -huh. just to be considered right. half as good or is even, not even close to equal right. i see the same thing that's been done to her uh that i've had to go through as a uh, as a gay man you know i'm almost glad i mean i'm not actually glad but i'm almost glad um donald trump is the nominee for the gop and this is why I think the entire country will get to see, writ large, the kinds of abuse women suffer every day, mm -hmm. but, you know, they don't talk about mm -hmm. it. He's going to run this horrible campaign. He's going to call her all kinds of names. Mm -hmm. He's going to say she's playing the woman card, she's mm -hmm. whatever. And, you know, and, and, and the country will be able to stand by and witness you know, uh, uh, somebody being, you know, belittled because of their gender, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but the only bad thing about it, well, I, I, the one good thing I've seen come out of Trump is that people have had to rake, wait, raise up, wake, awaken to the fact that we are, there are so many racists out there. Oh, and, and, and they're like, because this, like, they tried to put it off on Obama. Oh, Obama's the reason. And I'm like, no, 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 no. They were always there. They just didn't wear their hood. They just, right, <laughs> they, right. had their, they were hiding behind their hoods. Right. And with the Tea Party movement, they are now able to take the hoods off and they call themselves tea, uh, the, the Tea Party. Right. And that's based solely on right. a racial thing, right. and be 
but after the November elections, we're going to unfortunately still have those people in our society. We have to figure out how to educate them. But you know, they're so, I guess we could figure out how to educate them, but they're so dwindling. I mean, they're, 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 their ranks are, 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 are dwindling every, every time somebody has a, a success, whatever mm -hmm. the, the, whether it's gay marriage mm -hmm. or whatever, you know. Yeah. Or, and, and let's face it, Latinos are going to be for the majority by mm -hmm. what 2020 or something like that so 2024 or something like yeah. that we're seeing texas turn blue because of this we're mm -hmm. seeing uh, so there are some good things to come out of his uh horrible campaigning and the horrible person that he is that he's just turned it's put an embarrassment on us all as americans right. i mean where everybody's it, the world is watching us and the world is mocking us too. oh yes they they mm -hmm. just can't believe that it, it, this this could even uh, you know occur mm -hmm. but i like hillary too i um i supported sanders but now that it's pretty clear to me that sanders can't be um nominated I, I, I support Hillary, and I almost feel like, you know, I, I went so crazy for Obama that I cheated on Hillary a little, so now I, I don't want to <laughs> cheat on her again. I want to I want to support her, you know, f a full-throated uh, support of mm. her, because I think she's going to pick excellent um, Supreme Court justices. Oh, yes. And, and her cabinet's going to be brilliant, I'm sure. Oh. And uh, I'd, 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 Cory Booker would be a great vice president. I hope that would be such a great... <laughs> Yeah, either him. I uh, I got to meet Julian Castro, who's oh yeah, I everybody. Know. Yeah, the, the, the two twins. Yes, <laughs> as I refer to them. Yes, his his brothers. Joaquin. Are, yeah, Julian and yeah, what? yeah. And one's a, a congressman, and now he's the uh, director of HUD. Uh, and so you have some wonderful diversity within our party. You see, we oh, speak. Oh, those guys to, are comers. Um, yes, yeah, they you are. have to know the, the, these names. Julio, Julian, or Julio. Julian. Julian and Joaquin Castro. Castro. They they went to Harvard Law School, so I have to admit that I have a little bit of prejudice in their favor. <laughs> um, but they're brilliant young guys, and they're doing brilliant work. And I think one of them has a good chance of being uh, a vice presidential nomination. Yeah. And I think I believe it's going to be Julian. You do? Uh, yeah, because he's he's set up to be there. He's they he's already one of the. Um, one of our, adv our our surrogates out there, he and he has the he has the education, he has the smarts, and he he's able to take care of things at home while she can take care of things abroad, right. kind of thing. Right, and right, they right. They, that makes sense. And it sets it up perfectly for an eight years that he can run. Right. And um, the w another good thing to come out of Trump is that he's basically decimated the Republican Party, and it's pulled the mask back to show him what oh, they totally, were. Oh, totally, yeah. They're racist. They don't. They're misogynistic. They don't care about anybody but the rich. His yeah. tax plan will add trillions of dollars to our debt, um, and so it gives a start. There's a strike contest between Hillary and Trump. Oh, yeah. And uh, they're like, and they're like, even on the LGBT issues. They're like, Trump doesn't really care. Yeah, he doesn't care because he doesn't g g care about anything no. but himself. He's, no. he's very Trump set. Trump right. as, Trump well, as Center. Republicans can, can be. At most Republicans. Yeah, very self serving. So, um, Sorry, all my Republican clients <laughs> and friends. N not, not every <laughs> single one. But the, when you talk about the party itself, they, when they're, what they've allowed it's it to their, be, yeah. they've allowed it, they unleashed this monster. They never reined in any of their racism, they never reined in, and they never. Uh, care have lost their to care, care about the little people, um, which is it's so ironic because all these imp southern impoverished southern whites are voting uh, under the Tea Party rubric, and they're, they're impoverished. They they have been left behind by the economy. Maybe they were in the kinds of jobs that were outsourced. It's just I don't I don't understand. I don't understand the but that oh, that allure is pure racism. I think it's oh, pure. Yeah. It's purely. You know, we don't want anybody of color or mm -hmm. or a, a woman or God forbid a gay president. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what. I, Not I'm, that we haven't had a gay president. Probably we haven't had, we haven't had an out gay yeah, president. Right, so exactly. let's put it that way. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, the Republicans have done a really good job of um, encouraging people to vote against their best self-interest, and you see them say things like, "Oh, keep your government away from my food stamps." Right, exactly. Uh, I don't me. want any interference <laughs> with, with my, my social, social security. security. Right. Yeah, I don't exactly. want government touching, keep your government hands off my social security. Right. And I'm like, right. that is the government. Yes, right. you have paid into it. You need to understand that is your money. But you don't want, if you left it to the Republicans, they would have privatized it, thrown it into the stock market, and allowed it just to disappear. <laughs> they would. And then you end up having to eat 
dog food when you retire, right. if, if you're right. still alive, if there's still a planet. So tell me, uh, you know, I'm from New York. I just came here a year ago. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, the climate there is a little different, I have to say, from my experience. There's a lot more um, gay, straight interaction, mm -hmm. Support that I've seen. I don't. I mean, I'm not. Listen, I'm not a big activist yet. <sighs> but, but you know, but what kinds of what what are the kinds of issues that straight people should can be concerned with? I mean, to to make sure that you know their their gay friends and colleagues have a fair shake. Like, what are, what 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 are important issues here in Hawaii? Like what's going on here? What's going on here is we're looking, besides the conversion therapy, is also looking at the transgender issues, making sure everybody, and making sure they educate themselves on the transgender issues because there's a lot of misinformation out there. We use the wrong terms. We we swap gender and sex. They're two different things. Right. Um, uh, and so making sure that people understand the differences and be able to help because somebody they know and love is a member of the LGBT community mm -hmm. and if we all want to move forward we all have to move forward together right. like Loretta Lynch said yet, uh, two days ago uh, that we will overcome this we will do it together and we are going to move be able to come the fact that we have a sitting attorney general that stands up for the transgender community right. is huge right. and that's thanks to Obama's leadership on this issue right. and it shows again the strike, strike contest between what the Democrats are doing versus what the Republicans. The Republicans are pushing these these issues of uh, HB two of fear and discrimination and hatred. If we see it here locally. You have Bob McDermott and his campaign of hatred and fear and misinformation against the LGBT community. Yeah, he will attack women's rights at any chance he gets. And so this is there. This is what the Republican Party is boiled down to at this stage. You're going to have stage. to give me some names of these people so I can have them on the show so I can talk to them and get to the <laughs> co core of what, you know, what mm -hmm. makes them tick. But I'm going to take a quick break. You're watching thinktechhawaii.com. I'm Marianne Sasaki. Uh, we'll be back right shortly. Aloha, my name is Justina Spiritu, and I'm the co-host of Hawaii Farmers Series. This is my co-host, Matthew Johnson, and you can catch us every Thursday at 4 p.m. at thinktechhawaii.com. What do we talk about, Matt? So on Hawaii Farmers Series, we're going to be bringing on the farmers and also supporter of farmers, including restaurants, caterers, as well as government supporters and nonprofits to hear their background stories and understanding our local ag community just a little bit better. Yeah, essentially there's a lot more that goes into farming and the local food community beyond just producing the food. And we want to feature and get the background story on all these folks and see how we all work together as a community. So join us every Thursday. Aloha. And so we've caused some problems with the... Uh, uh, Hi. Oh. <laughs> You're back with Marion Sasaki and Michael Golo Goloyu. Goloyu. Michael Goloyu. I'm going to say, we're back with Michael Goloyu. Perfect. Yes. Uh, so you take a deep, deep breath and, you know, <laughs> and anything can happen. Oh, yeah. But we were talking a little bit about the repressive, uh, you know, cultural uh, norms in Hawaii and, and, uh, how it's incumbent upon us all to rock the boat a little mm. bit if we see things that we don't like happening or people don't understand, uh, they just don't understand. I'll give you an example. I support the Gay Men's Chorus, mm. and uh, one of the partners is like, why would you support the Gay Men's Chorus? And I'm like, because they're the Gay Men's <laughs> Chorus, right? And they're great, that's why. But it's like, if you're not, if you're not gay or not anything, why would you do that? Mm. I said. I have news for you. Not only do I support the gay men's chorus, but the firm supports the gay men's <laughs> chorus. So, you know, it's it, it just that people need to not think of uh, any dividing line whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Or also not think what's in it for them. Why, I'm like, because people are like, well, uh, so you only support LGBT issues because it benefits you. And I'm like, I don't believe in marriage. And I go, I was out there on the forefront for marriage equality because I knew what it meant. Right. And I go, it was never in it for me. I, I didn't spend all that time, money, and energy. For me, I did it for the greater good of the community. It benefits society. Yes, it really so does. Open-mindedness, per perpetuating open-mindedness toward, you know, mm -hmm. things that we, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have to tell you that I am a, a little bit surprised at how quickly 
um, or maybe this is just my experience, the, um, the general acceptance of transgender uh, people has been, I, it seemed that, you know, it seems like it's only been maybe 10 years since, but, but like my, somebody like my mother is like, oh, so the transgender, that's, what's the big deal? Everybody should be what they want. You want to be a boy, be a boy. If you want to be a girl, whatever. And so my 82-year-old mother of Brooklyn is saying that. I mean, it's, it's definitely come a long way. I mean, mm. who, who, so how's that ha been happening and what's, you know? It goes back to the fact that, it goes back to what Harvey Milk said. When they know us, they'll vote for us. Right. When it's harder to discriminate against my community once you met us. Right. We're wonderful people. Right. Uh, I'm a little biased there, but right. it's the same with anything. It's the fear of the unknown. By removing that fear, by uh, doing the educational pieces, by getting there and uh, with wonderful advocates like we have in Hina, uh, she had the, the wonderful film Place in the Middle. Mm -hmm. It tells her story about the cultural aspects of transgender with Hawaii. And uh, if you look back throughout history here in Hawaii, being gay, being transgender was part of the culture. Right, there's always been a place. Yes, yes. there's always a place for the, the, the Mahu community. Right. It wasn't until uh, dun, 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 yeah. missionaries come in it's and bring, bring in the Bible and bring in their discrimination with them in hand saying, oh, you need to cover up and by the way, here's your new God. And by the way, you got to get rid of your hula because that's... Um, sex <laughs> dance. The sex Devil, dance. Devilishly sex, devilish, devilish sex dance, yeah, I guess. So, I would think they would think. And so, so it's understanding and removing those barriers, again, making sure people know who we are. And we have, transgender issues have come forward. We still have a long way to go because um, this, this year alone, well, we only have, uh, I believe, 42 uh, women of color, transgender women of color have been killed this year. Really? And, and we're only into May. Wow. In, in, in the United States? In the United States. Oh. And, they, um, and we see things like with North Carolina, with that, with that HB2, um, this is the pushback. We're seeing them use the same tactics there in, on HB2 with the transgender community they tried with the LGBT, it is, it, LGBT it's, community. That's how I know we're winning. That we're, It's like incremental, mm -hmm. you know. The, it, it, you know, I've, I've seen, I've seen, listen, I'm old. So I've seen the, the 60s and the 70s mm -hmm. and the 80s. And, the, and every group has used the same kinds of tactics and, and, and made, made progress. And then it, it seems like they go to the next, the next most vulnerable. Yeah, Are you yeah. vulnerable? Let's see if we can try to stop you because yeah. you're not like us. Yeah, because, you, you know, the, unfortunately with these people, the, the, way, the only way they think they can lift themselves up is by tearing somebody else down. Right. And we see it in politics. We see it in the um, culture. We see it within... Uh, I have a question for you. This, sure. This, I, I, want, I think this question is going to be very valuable for my audience because, you know, I, I consider myself, myself a sophisticated, you know, well-read uh, lawyer, professional. The word cisgender, mm -hmm. this word cisgender, I, I've encountered this mm -hmm. word, um, and I know what it means. It means heterosexual, right? No. no. Okay, what does it mean? It means that you uh, identify with the gender that you were given at birth. Okay. So, and so... Um, See, this is important information. Yeah, so, so you, a member of the transgender community would not be cisgender. They're transgender. Um, and the idea is that they... The idea that we even have to give somebody a gender at birth, that the idea that we need gender on our identification cards, for what purposes? Oh, yeah, what purposes? There is no purposes. Uh, we see, so we're working towards, at least at the, uh, the LGBT caucus is one of the things we're pushing for at convention, is going to gender neutral terms in our bylaws and our thing, to get rid of male and female representation to the state central committee and make us... Yeah, I think, I thought that was crazy because when I was at caucusing there, like we need five men and five women and I'm like, why? For gender equity, because uh, we used to be such a male dominated right. thing. So we're looking towards, at least for the SCC, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get it with the delegates because it's a little more difficult with that. But to look, try to figure out some way to elect delegates that give us a gender diversity. Right. And the idea, just so everybody knows, is that there's this false analogy, the false pre pretense that there's only male and female. And there's a much... Do, uh, do we really still yeah. believe that? We well, don't still believe that. Of that course we do. A dichotomy of male and female. There's a whole spectrum of people that. Yeah, because I mean, Facebook has 53 different genders they uh, allow you to select from. Uh, where it actually, in some in some circles of uh, educational thought, there's up to 250. Wow. To two, 
different because it's it gender is so fluid just like I know, sexual I don't orientation you can even categorize it i mean because you can be a, a little bit over the, uh, just slightly in some way and um, then you know and it's how you self-identify and how what you makes you how you how you wish to present yourself and how you identify and to make sure that you have the freedom to be the person that you want to be um, as long as you're not harming anybody else right. what is the what's the difference I'm so glad you explained cisgender to me because I I was like when I know it's appropriate to use this term sometimes but I'm no, I can't I have no idea when it's appropriate to use so and so you're saying also then if I'm hearing you uh, you can be gay and cisgender yes, you could be I'm straight and cisgender you mm -hmm. could be any just, just it's just about it deals with your gender identity right. that you if you identify solely with the gender that you were given at birth and but I don't identify solely with I mean <sighs> you know I, it's, I, I don't. I, I mean, I'm, you know, I don't identify only as a woman. I mean, there's lots of ways in which well, I'm, we, like, we, it was a tomboy or, you know. Yeah, and so that's how the, the gender diversity is out there. And we, it comes down to breaking these barriers down to allowing people that, we, again, we don't really need the gender identities, the gender markers on our uh, identification cards. It just makes some people feel better. And, again, the fear of the unknown and not having this, the educational or even the willingness to learn about something different you're like oh that's that's different i don't want to know that but they why not education is power and it opens doors right. and um within with regards to the lgbt community it opens you to the diversity of the lgbt community right. and uh the and unfortunately for so many years in the marriage battle the t was silent and so that yeah i experienced that mm -hmm. myself yeah that's why i said it seems like yeah. yeah, so we've, the idea was, like we talked about earlier, is that the marriage was done, we're all done. Yeah. And I, like at the Capitol, um, when the final vote happened, someone goes, oh, we're all done. There's nothing else to do. And I looked at them, I took a beat, and I started listing conversion therapy, banning that, making sure transgender com our community is taken care of. We just got past this session, the um, ensuring that um, insurance companies will not deny health benefits to their transgender uh, customers. Uh, really? They, yeah. they do that? They do that. It's, they, on what basis? Oh, you're transgender. That's, you're not covered. And see, it's not covered. And see, do you see transgender anywhere here in this? Is, you don't get. We're talking about the flu. A transgender individual going to the office and getting a flu to get a flu shot. And um, so, with this new passage of the law, and hopefully the governor will sign it uh, into law in a public signing, if he's watching. Please. Governor, please. Thanks. Yes. Um, that we will um, then help get the transgender community when it comes to sex reassignment surgery, should they, should they choose that path. Right, and the, that should every, be covered, I mean. It, you should, you'd think, because it's part of a medical, a medical procedure if they choose to go that path. And the, uh, it's like a corrective procedure, like, a, well, yeah, I don't know, mm, if you have, I don't know, uh, your leg is twisted in some way, you yeah. need corrective surgery. Yeah, it, but if you choose to do that, the idea that, that uh, prior to last year, we had a requirement that you actually had to have surgery to have your birth certificate changed, to have gender reassignment surgery. And, um, and now you can be self-identified? Self-identified. Uh, the, there is some, uh, you have to have a sign off by a doctor. Um, they wanted to make everybody go to court and this and that. And I'm like, we're talking, I go, why? The, I, I go, the implementation be, should be as easy and as painless Yes, there's a filing fee, like it is with any other legal document. And all you are doing is changing a misinformation on your birth certificate. Right. Birth certificate right. is your foundational document. Right. And getting people to understand that was a great leap forward. That's huge. It yeah. really is. Because um, a friend of mine's um, son was beaten up. Because oh, that's one subject I wanted to get on, abuse of, of, of transgender kids. Well, it's and, and gay kids, too, still, mm -hmm. to some oh, yeah. extent. Oh, it's still a huge problem, yeah. LGBT violence against the LGBT community, more towards the transgender side. But yeah. we're still seeing, like in Texas, there was a, there's in the last year and a half, last eight months, uh, 58 people that have been attacked in one suburb in Texas. And uh, we're seeing less of that across the state, but we're seeing a rash of... Like a, like of transgender murders of w especially women of color, and that is the. Well, problem. this is like the most disposable, uh, or I, I mean, and I say that in the, in the, in the, in the most uh, cynical sort of way. But these are the most disposable members of society. I mean, you're you know a gay tra a, tra a transgendered uh, black a black woman. I mean, is is you know. Uh, unfortunately, that is what in some societies that they 
they, they think of that. It's the, op uh, it's the opposite. Well, I shouldn't say it's It's the opposite of what the you know paradigm is, obviously. Uh, white, white game, you know, man, white straight <laughs> paradise, uh, <laughs> white, white straight male. But, but, but that's why people, you know, there's. Yeah, they're they're marginalized. Yeah. And, uh, and I think, and I think we can put all that violence back onto the Republican Party and the Tea Party because they, if you can mistreat and de denigrate the President of the United States for the color of his skin, and that whole birth certificate birther movement, why can't you do that to somebody who's transgender, person of color, if the the President is one right. of the most powerful people, if not the most powerful right. person on the planet, can be denigrated and ignored with the Supreme Court nominations, does that not have a rippling effect that washes across this entire country and unfortunately taking out members of the transgender community and people of color ac across this land? Right. And the idea that the, and, it, and so I'm so happy the Black Lives Matter a movement came forward because it did, and the people's response when you have people say, "Oh, but why li white lives matter?" And I go, "You don't say it that. You're not saying you're not. <laughs> you're not saying your life doesn't matter." But guess what? For years and generations, say, hundreds of years, history. You have hundreds of the, years. Yeah. They've been told that their right. lives don't matter, and it's been systemic within our racism, right. within our right. people culture. don't understand. Yeah. They just do. They're like, "What about me? White. What about me?" Yeah. And I'm like, "I'm sorry, you're a straight white male." Yeah. You are. I'm not crying. For you, <laughs> uh, there's nothing that for me to <laughs> worry about. I'm not going to be even marching down the streets or holding signs for your rights because you come with them. You come fully fledged. You get everything you want, basically. You don't have to fight for and, them. And you may not believe it, but you do. And you know who I'm talking to. We're going to take a <laughs> quick break. We'll be back in a few minutes. Aloha. My name is Reg Baker, and I'm the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Business in Hawaii is a program that is positive stories about business in Hawaii. Uh, we're tired of hearing the negativity and why it's the wrong place to have a business. We talk about the positive reasons for having a business in Hawaii and, and how to be successful. We broadcast live every Thursday at 2 o'clock. We look forward to seeing you. Aloha. Aloha, namaskar, and hello. I am Anu Hittel, and I host a show on climate change. It's called Climate Change Beyond Outrage. And in it, we go beyond outrage to look at solutions to global climate problems facing people, nations, and the world. Join me every Tuesday at 1 o'clock Hawaii Standard Time. Aloha, namaskar, and goodbye. <laughs> Hi, you're back, you're back in Life and the Law. I'm Marianne Sasaki. I'm with Michael Gololu. Goloyu. No. Goloyu. I'm going to say it wrong every time until I get it. Goloyu, Michael Goloyu. And we're talking about uh, something that Michael did, this incredibly terif terrific feat he pulled off. I don't know how he pulled it off. I'll let you, I'll let you uh, surprise, t give, give everybody the surprise and tell us how you did it. Well, we, the travel ban that we asked, uh, we've reached out to every uh, mayor as well as the governor to issue travel bans to cities like North, uh, to states like North Carolina and Mississippi. And now we now are gonna have to go back and amend that request and add Tennessee, unfortunately. When they passed laws to target the LGBT community, to de discriminate, uh, give them empower discrimination into their law books to say you can discriminate to, against a gay couple a transgender person been using the bathroom and so we said and uh, we saw we saw this happening when Indiana did it um, that we were like hey you can't do this we shouldn't be sending our public employees into oh, harm's no. way I go we in the sh when you travel on the state's time you are have the full-fledged credit of the state behind you and you shouldn't lose your protections just because you are required to go to a conference in North Carolina or Mississippi and they have some very big uh, conferences in these states mm -hmm. and so we reached out uh, well last year to um, at the Oahu County Convention we passed I introduced and it got passed a resolution calling for a travel ban should something like at this point we we're dealing with Indiana and Indiana then since reneged on their horrible law um, and so we're like okay but I want this resolution there to ask for these travel bans should it become necessary. And we're actually looking, hopefully next session, to have it put into law like they're doing in California, that it's automatically for the entire all state employees cannot travel to a state that has these discriminatory laws. That'd be, That'd be terrific. So, That'd be so great. Um, 
when Mississippi, when North Carolina first with their HB2 and then Mississippi with their, and the, uh, with their enshrining discrimination into the law books just to attack the LGBT community, to make sure they, they're not covered by public accommodation laws. It's unfathomable. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, we've already had the discussion, I'm sorry, Southern states, about who can sit at the lunch counters. We've already had that discussion. You cannot pick and choose. If you're in the public domain of giving goods and services to the public. Right. You don't get to pick and choose based right. on your moral, unmoral high ground. Right. And so we reached out to the mayor, uh, Kirk Caldwell, and asked him, here's our resolution. We've had it passed. We, we ask that you en enact a travel ban to Missis North Carolina and Mississippi. And he did. And he actually went one step further and joined Mayors Against Discrimination. That's and it, terrific. He's one of the founding, uh, founding members. And so, well, some people will say he's not doing enough here or there. Um, he has stepped up and been there for us time and time again. Um, he was one of the one of the mayors to sign on for mayors for marriage equality. It's and so um, he's willing to put it out there that Hawaii is supposed to be the land of aloha. We're supposed to be making sure we take care of each other. We have non-discrimination policies here, and our public employees should not be put in harm's way when they're traveling as emissaries of the state. Right, right, absolutely, absolutely. And yeah. I mean, we have such um, harmony here, relative yeah. harmony, we're considering all the different kinds of people, and that should just extend to, you know, everybody, you yeah. know. So you know. We're hoping the governor, hi governor, uh, will issue his travel ban. We're still following up with the other mayors. We have. Should I call him? Should I call the governor and say, Governor? Where's your travel ban? Um, we are. We have resolutions onto this effect coming to the state convention as well. Uh, they we passed one in Ma um, Maui County and Big Island. Like we already did a Wahoo last year, and so now we're going to uh, hopefully pass one at the state level for the entire party to send the message loud and clear that not only are we asking the mayor and the governor to issue these bans, but the legislature to and the city councils across this great state to each put it in their law books, put it on the book, law on the books, that we will not allow our public employees to be put in harm's way when they're traveling on the taxpayer dollars. If you as a personal individual want to go to see North Carolina, have at it. Um, it's a lovely state. I feel sorry for them. I still, uh, it's, yeah. it's still a black eye. Uh, I have met some really good people when I was there four years ago, and they're yeah. like, that they're thinking about moving out of state just to get away from it. And it is it is a pretty, it's kind of a scourge. It, it really is, is. It's five billion dollars on their economy they're losing and they've, and it's, and it's not just everybody's like, oh, you activists, you're being crazy. And we have no, like Fortune 500. Saying, my, Fortune 500. Like mother, my mother is like, what's the big deal here? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. she's, and she's not uh, yeah. out on the front lines, yeah. you know? We have Fortune 500 companies saying, get your act together or we're out of here. Right, and yeah. their uh, Bank of America is being, not only getting pressure from their own employees, but from the general banking community. And the general banking community is pretty much conservative when it comes. Uh, I think so. so. And so they're getting pressure right. saying, you need to get out of North Carolina. You should not have your headquarters in North Carolina. This is the kind of stuff that's going to happen. And they're all like, you, we use our power of our dollar. We use the power of our voice. And we ask our government to step in. And luckily, and thankfully, we have Obama there with uh, um, AG Lynch, Lynch came forward and she gave that wonderful speech on Monday and I hope all your viewers have at least watched it once, I've watched it several times, where this is the first time that we've seen with any administration that steps up and takes it to the next step that tells the transgender community, we will be there, we will fight with right. you. And, and it's we as, not just the Obama administration, but we as the Democratic Party need right. to follow through and have, have the president's back. And so hopefully when we go to convention in a couple of weeks, that we will see these resolutions move forward, that we'll see the changes in our bylaws to make sure that, that we are the party, the big tent, and that we remind our other members of the Democratic Party that may not necessarily agree with us on this issue, mm -hmm. but you can't have a party in a big tent when you're beating up on other guests. No, other no, member, other, no, other 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 family members as it were. Not. Uh, and you know, we're Democrat. I mean, yeah. you know, like that when you say that there's a history to that. So you better be careful who you think you you want to beat up in. Yeah. I mean, you know, we we're, we're supposed to be the ones who are on the right side, right? right? Yeah, so, so I have to ask you a quick question. Sure. This is it, we've had such a serious discussion. And I, you know, I and and I don't mean to uh, trivialize the discussion in any way. It's a splendid discussion, but I have to ask you: Why on earth is pride 
in October now. I have no idea. I, <laughs> as former chair of Hollywood Pride, so, I, I, I was aghast when it happened. <laughs> it bothers me. And um, I'm they, all confused. I can't. My whole year is all confused now. Exactly. Well, I can say the LGBT caucus is having a, an event on June 26th. At oh, David, Bu David Buster's to celebrate the one year. It's going to be one year marriage equality to the day for the entire th state. Oh, great. Uh, if you go to glbtcaucushawaii.org, there's more information there. But with Pride... Um, it's just so anomalous. I, I, the re their reasonings, um, I turned it over to the Legacy Foundation. I did it for five years. Um, when the, se the original LGBT, LGBT center closed, there was this number name this area and so i stepped in and said okay i'm doing this at keeping the torch alive making sure that we did it get back to our roots um put the parade and make sure the parade is our priority and then the celebration afterwards moved the celebration from mccoy pavilion to Kapiolani park where every other affinity group has their so celebration terrific. it put us back out there and, uh, and not behind the walls of mccoy pavilion uh, I proved that you could have an LGBT event without it being soaked in booze. Because if you go to some prides back in the mainland, there's a lot of alcohol. Well, it depends on what city you go to. Yeah, you? and so it's... Not yeah. New York, though, I have to say. The, New York is, is is relatively sober. It's not, I have to say, I don't know, maybe you've been and you don't think so, but... There's, some, there's <laughs> sections of it that are not sober. I have not been there for Pride, but I've been there. But I, I've seen the pictures and I've heard the stories. So there are parts of it. But the idea is that the... The parade and the celebration are out there to let people be free to express themselves for who they are. And so, and it's all in remembrance of Stonewall. Right. And Stonewall happened towards the end of uh, June, right. June 26, 27, 28, something right. like that, around those dates. And so that's why Pride Month means so much. You know, it's so, it's so important because, you know, it's a lot of people's first sort of uh, interaction with people who are openly and proudly gay you mm -hmm. know they, they people may be interacting with gay people all the time and of course they have no idea that yeah. what but but it, it's such it's such an important event and you know i don't think it's so important that it's in june it's just that it like i said it, it throws off my calendar because i i you know what am i going to do in june now that june is usually <laughs> the, the whole month of june is usually very busy but i know that there are going to be a lot of activities so. we're going to have um well Kauai still does their pride there and they they're the second weekend of june um big island is doing theirs i think theirs is the first weekend in july so there's other activities to do right. and we're going to um like i said the caucus will do our thing to commemorate a year uh year to the day as well as a it's our 15 year anniversary we are the original caucus so when people talk about the other caucuses, I go, yeah, you're great, but we're the original one. <laughs> Without <laughs> us, we set the uh, we set the we set the guidelines, and we put in a lot of everybody built their law their their bylaws off of us. Really? So yeah. So when people talk about their bylaws, I'm like, yeah, that's great. I know it's because they're mine. And so <laughs> I'm not a founding member. I've only been with the caucus. I've only been a Democrat for seven years, six years. Really? Seven, yeah. We were Republican before. I was a Republican for four years. Fascinating. Um, yeah. I was nonpartisan for my adult life until I moved back home. I was in San Francisco for ten years after I went there for college at University of San Francisco, and then moved back home sixteen years ago. Wow! And so my parents were Republicans at the time, and they had all these Republican friends, and they're like, "Come be a member. We're a member of the Big Tent." Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "Okay, let's see how big this tent is for the gay, atheist, liberal." Progressive, and I found out it's they, they are not the party of the Big Ten. They have a drink umbrella with a bunch of holes. No, yeah, they yeah, that's do. It's although I, I, I I wish I had a dollar for every gay Republican I've met. I have to say, it's yeah. like but I was like, how could you? And like, this is a party who is choosing. What? Do you, yeah, I don't know. And, and a lot of it does with the. And when I see a lot of the gay Republicans, they tend to be more the affluent, or they've yes, and they're like I more the screw you, I've got mine kind of thing. And, and I'm like, you, the, you would have nothing. Without you see these people here, you the would have nothing. Without the Democrats, yeah, right. I go, yeah. your, your rights have never been expanded. Uh, as right. they, they have been under right. uh, Democrats. And like the perfect family, yeah. the kids, and the, the mm. you know, lo lovely co-op, mm -hmm. and you know, every, all, all the you know, things that people are thinking of. Yeah, yeah, without so. these people, you would, would have nothing. Exactly. So, and so I just, I don't get it. But to each their own, I go, but... Now, but that's what I used to think until recently, until you've seen the, the, the way that the Republican Party has denigrated our current it, president. It, and it's programmatic. It's yes. a programmatic d uh, destruction of, of the president and of 
people's rights mm -hmm. and like I said the, the the more vulnerable you are in society mm -hmm. the more they want to go after you the yeah. more that more vicious they are it's just it's become almost a mental illness as far as I'm concerned when you look at the, what they're doing and I'm yeah. like the fact that you want to associate yourself with these people makes me question you as a person as an individual what you really value I'm like you don't have to become a Democrat but why in Good God, would you support a party that thinks that women are second-class citizens and incub incubators and right. don't deserve equal pay for equal right. work? And I'm like, think outside yourself. Think outside your little bubble and think about the greater good. That's what the definition of Democrat is, mm -hmm. is think about the greater good. Mm -hmm. we're, that's what we're here for. Yeah. We're, it's, we're all of us, yes. right? Well, I want to thank you so much for coming today. Sure. I really appreciate it. He did a double double duty, too, which was above and beyond the call of service. I'm Marianne Sasaki. This is Life in the Law We're on Wednesdays between 1 and 2. Uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you for having me.